Hello, YouTube, and thank you to everyone who tried weighing in on the magnetic challenge last week. There were a lot of different answers, some of which would work, some of which would work but destroy the magnet in the process, and some that would not work at all. Before getting to that, some viewers recognized the scientist I was talking about last week as the physicist Julius Sumner Miller. He's a remarkably entertaining and enthusiastic physics popularizer. His show, Why Is It So?, was broadcast from 1963 to 1986. And as I watched some of his shows here on YouTube, all these childhood memories were coming back to me of watching the man's reruns when I was young. Looking back on it, I think he may have been partially responsible for why I ended up here in physics. Unfortunately, he passed away before I even watched his show. And even though he'll never see this, I feel like I should say it. Thank you, Dr. Miller, for showing me how exciting science can be. Let's get to the challenge. As a reminder, I asked if I have two pieces of metal. One's magnetic, and the other's an imposter. How do I figure out which is which? A lot of people suggested I should take one of the bars at random and see how strongly it attracts the other. Then hit or heat it repeatedly and see whether or not the force attracting it to the other has weakened or stayed the same. If the force stays the same, it means I was abusing the imposter. If the force is weakened, it means I was abusing the magnet. The reason this happens is because if you abuse a magnet badly enough, the magnetic force it can exert decreases. This is because a magnet is actually made up of all these tiny little magnetic domains that all happen to be lined up in the same direction. Knocking the magnet around or heating it up causes these domains to get randomized, therefore destroying the magnetism. Well, yes, this method would work, there's the downside that you have a 50-50 shot of destroying your magnet, which is not very desirable. Several people suggested breaking one of the bars in half, and then seeing if the two pieces attract and repel each other depending on their orientation. If they do, you've got the magnet. If they don't, you've got the imposter. As before, this method works, provided you can break the magnet in half, but add a 50-50 shot of destroying your collection of magnets. Now, this one I'm surprised no one actually guessed. Hypothetically, you could try balancing one of the bars on the tip of your finger, and then seeing whether or not it always wants to pivot into a north-south alignment. Technically, it's cheating because you're using the Earth's magnetic field, but I was still surprised that no one tried to guess it. These three solutions could have worked, but there's one that's much easier, and it leaves the magnets intact, and it doesn't rely on the Earth's magnetic field. The answer is to make a T with the magnet and the imposter, then try making a T with the opposite configuration. The configuration that's hardest to separate is the one with the real magnet touching the center of the fake. This is because the magnetic field generated by a bar magnet is strongest at its poles. This is easiest to see by actually playing with a bar magnet and experiencing for yourself. The field of this tiny magnet is along this axis. Notice how no matter how I try and approach it with a piece of iron, it will always spin so its pull gets pulled to the iron and not to the side. So there you have it, an easy, non-destructive way of finding out which bar is the magnet and which one is the fake. If you feel the need to troll your physicist friends, I highly recommend tracking down a magnet that looks like this, and then painting it so that it looks like a normal bar magnet. If you give them this riddle, and they try using the T method to figure out which one's the magnet and which one's the imposter, they will get the wrong answer 100% of the time. And you get to watch as they slowly descend into madness, trying to understand why physics has abandoned them. <laughs> uh, anyway, so thanks for watching. And congratulations to Kim Dabblestein Peterson for being the first to come up with the correct approach. Thank you everyone who tried figuring this out. I do read all the comments, I just don't answer them until I posted the response video. I don't want to give the answer away. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, tell all your friends. And as always, when in doubt, use science.